There's a Firefly base camp somewhere out west. With doctors. They're working on a cure. Mm -hmm. I've heard this before. And whatever happened to me is it's the key, the key to, to finding find the vaccine. That's what this is. We've heard this a million times. Vaccines, miracle cures. None of it works, ever. Fuck you, man. I didn't ask for this. You and me both. This isn't going to end well, Tess. We need to go back. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by our Patreon producer, Knight Rider 169. Thank you for sponsoring this whole month of episodes. We're back. Another episode. We we finished we'll be watching episode two. It was it was strong the second time around for me. How about you? Some parts were strong, some yeah. parts bug me even more. <laughs> we'll go we're gonna get to the airing of our grievances good, <laughs> later good, in the episode. Good. But how are you doing today, Robbie? I'm doing good. It's one of those long days. We're doing this episode a little bit later than I wanted to. It's my fault. It's totally fine. Let's, no, uh, you know. It's okay. It's okay. Let's just stand up. Let's just get some good quality podcasting going and pass it out to the masses. Yes, Mass. sir. Mass. Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. there was a lot in this episode. It was it was shorter than the first. Um, I don't know if you saw the numbers. HBO, they're up 22% from the first episode, this episode. So, even, so obviously word of mouth has gotten out and the show is obviously become extremely successful that's good you know so but you know this is this episode you know we talked about we did the recap on sunday but this episode introduced you know our first you know infected in right. the clickers um which you know looking at social media talking with with some of the people who've been listening to the podcast generally i think everybody's been, was satisfied with that part of it yeah I you think know so. they were um they were extremely well done. Um, a lot of people were were very positive the fact that they didn't use CGI and you know that they did prosthetics and and did amazing makeup work. Yeah, I, I appreciated that too. Right. I think they said they used the same person uh, who did uh, Chernobyl. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was that was huge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and whenever you you know CGI has come a long way, but whenever you can make it like more authentic and real, it, it's, it's far more powerful, especially on a TV kind of. Um, a vehicle yeah and then we 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 lost one of the main characters um thus far in tess right that um violation that she she got at the end of of the kiss of death they're calling it right are we there yet are we going to talk about that no, we're, we're going to talk a lot about it tess in this episode oh, but we lost her yeah um man you know what we forgot to say if you hadn't watched the episode spoilers we're going in deep now right so if you haven't watched the episode yet uh, you better go watch it now because we're we're letting it all out, right? Yeah, there's, there's that, not we're not holding anything that's back. That's the spoiler yet. alert. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a belated spoiler alert. Yeah, but one of the things I I definitely wanted to dive in into this episode was, um, of course we'll talk about Tess, we'll talk about the clickers, but I wanted to and some Easter eggs and, and things like that and what we like to see moving forward. But I wanted to start with Joel, right? Right, uh, right now. Um, throughout this episode, there was a lot of subtle things with Joel. Um, and I want to call it, um, maybe rightfully for, but fear. Fear was a very important piece in this, in this, um, episode. Started well in the beginning with, um, um, the professor, Professor Ratna, um, when she's, you know, that whole, the intro. Right, yeah. It, um, where she's speaking, it's all in Indonesian. Um, she's talking to the general, and you can see a lot of fear in her to the point where she uses the one word to describe how to solve this. Bomb. Bomb. Right. Bomb the city, bomb everybody in it. Um, it th that actress did a phenomenal job. I want to give her credit. It was Christine Hakim. Hakim, or... I guess we pronounce it Hakeem, right? So she she showed a lot of fear um, in, you know, to the point where she's like, you know what? My time is limited now. I just want to go home. Right. So that was the first element of of the fear of this fungus um, that you, you saw. And then Joel, throughout this whole episode, at various points that we're going to, we're going to talk about. And I think one of the first um, things, scenes that we're going to play is, you, you, you know, he's reluctant throughout this mission 
even though he's trying to get a battery to go, you know, find and save his brother. Yeah. But there's a lot of, for a guy who's so hardened by what's happened over the 20 years, and obviously he's a survivor, sure. fear still played a big effect into into him. Yeah. it For me, it's a little too much yeah. for the fear that mm-hmm. I'm seeing from him. Yeah, yeah. Because we talk about the differences between the game and the show. Yeah. And one of the thing, one of the differences is in the game, they're doing all of this stuff, not for his brother, but they're doing it to get guns. Yeah. So when Joel in the game decides, when he says a bunch of times, what are we doing, Tess? It's time. <laughs> let's go back, Tess. Let's yeah. go back. Because they're really just trying to get weapons. They're not trying to get to somebody who you, that they love that, you know, they think could be hurt and yeah. danger. And, you know, we started the uh, first episode with Joel in the QZ and he's doing, you know, he's picking up odd jobs that are the yeah. worst jobs so then he can get money and, you know, to, I believe it was to help, you know, fund his quest to get the weapon or to get um, the battery. I'm yeah. really kind of unsure about that. I don't know if you yeah, well, it's, picked it's up a lot of the, doing the it. trading and stuff. Yeah, right, they kind of were kind of vague on that. Yeah, though. I feel like it. the end result was you know, let's get a battery so we can yeah. get a truck so we can get out of here so I can drive to where my brother is because yeah. he's yeah, not heard ant- from him. Yeah, I haven't heard from him. He's not making radio contact, so yeah. I need to get out of here. So you're you're now outside of the QZ. You do have a person with you that, you know, is infected. Yeah. Um, I you there's like an unsure uh, element to the entire thing, but she's clearly not switching over. Yeah. Right. And for all the other things that you would think that this character has done as far as, you know, killing other <laughs> fungus infected zombies. Zombies, yeah. Um, and, you know, clickers. We'll talk about the clickers later and stuff. I, I, He's just real easy to go, what are we doing? Let's get out of here. It's it's more believable in the game than it is for right now in the, in the show because there's something more... Like, there's something more important that he's supposed yeah. to be trying to get in the show. Yeah. So he's just really quick throughout this episode to yeah. just try to just drop and run. And it's not that he's afraid of her because he's still willing to take her back to the QZ. It's well, one thing if it's like, oh, she's going to turn. Let's just ditch her and get out of here because I'm afraid she's going to turn a second and kill us. He's not. He's like, let's just I take her back to the QZ. There. Let's, th- let's leave her there and she could be someone else's problem. He still has a little fear in there because, you know, obviously they... they, they, they you know the the show opens with with her sleeping and they're they're watching with the gun on her right right that's no, fear I, right there and I, then when she slips by the piano in the hotel into the water after he picks her up he kind of pulls his hands back because he's like you know ooh that remember the cheese touch you know so he 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 was he's very cautious maybe it's not fear but but just cautious and to obviously your, not cautious enough not if, cautious he, if enough, he didn't right? think about it the yeah, entire time if you're thing. supposed to be walking with someone that you're that's infected yeah that you're extremely afraid of oh she fell over let me go help her out (laughs) you know it's it can't it it can't slip that easily i I know he's older now but yeah his first interaction is let me help her but then once he starts when he gets into his head and he's like oh i'm touching this infected let me let her go right and then you know we see it again at the end when tess wants to show the bite she takes that first step forward he backs up his first again he's afraid of you know the the of that the clicker the whole thing in the museum with the clickers is fear one of the we we listened to that first scene um that opened up the podcast with um you know with with him you know not wanting to sign up for this um the next scene we're going to listen to is that first discussion that he's having with tess when ellie's in the bathroom and to to your point he's ready to bail and she's like trying to convince him not to because she knows as soon as they go back to the QC, they're going to put a bullet in Ellie's head. Yeah. And she's starting to have hope. Like this episode, I want to, uh, from my point of view, I saw this episode as the the real, they showed the real fear and, and danger of the infected, the title of the episode, and the hope um, from Tess's side that comes, that springs out from her being finding out what Ellie is. So let's listen to that um, real quick. Okay. She made it through the fucking night. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen sooner or later. All right, we're still close to the wall. We sneak her back into the QZ. We find a different way to get the battery. This is our best shot. We take her back to the QZ. Someone's going to notice her arm. They're going to scan her. And they'll kill her. Well, better them than us. 
You need to stop talking about this kid like she's got some kind of life in front of her. Wow. Yeah, it's... I mean, the only thing I can think of is maybe he is... Projecting, he's he's yeah. projecting too much of maybe you know seeing his daughter die and he doesn't want to see yeah. it again. Yeah, but he doesn't still, want to get attached, right? He doesn't, he doesn't want to get attached, and I can I can understand that. But once again, at the same time, your mission is to get to your brother. You have this opportunity. You're yeah. already outside the QZ. She's your best bet. It just doesn't make any. It it's just too easy. Sorry. Yeah. No. You're you're right. Like, and and from Tessa's point of view, she she I think. Of course, it was beginning, you know, let's get the battery, let's go get Tommy, because obviously she has a relationship with Tommy, too, that hopefully we're going to see later right, on, right? Right. But it quick, I think it starts to shift when she realizes that Ellie really is immune, and she starts to get hope, but she knows how to activate, let's call it activate Joel, and stick to the, this is a way for us to get the battery. But deep down, she's starting to turn on the fact that, forget the battery, she, this girl might be really the key here, and this is the first right. s- beginning of that that change. Um, that's from 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 my point of view because you know that makes sense. Tess, as as the character evolves in this episode to the point where she, obviously she gets bitten, uh, that's when all that kind of escalates. Um, her hope that to this is a solution to resolve the the pe- the issue with the world, right? Right. So, so from that point of view, uh, Joel is still, I don't know if still fear, but he is very reluctant to move forward. I don't, I don't know what, what that is with the, the character at this point, because he's almost forgetting about his brother with the battery. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Let's, let's move on from this, uh, this section for a second. Um, you did mention to me, um, there's like a backstory that they got going on now from for for Tess. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up, you know, later on when she talks about the atrocities and wanting to make things right. So um, they wanted they wanted to have, you know, perspective to why she she is the way she is and, sure. and the hope she has. So they, um, this, you know, Neil and um, and Craig. The, the basically I'll call them the showrunners, but it's the directors and the writers and right, all that yeah. stuff, right? They 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 came up with a story where they they not came up with a story, but they had um El, um her husband and her son got infected. She ends up killing the husband, but she doesn't have it in her to kill her son, and she locks him in the basement and she leaves. Right? Um right. they they actually I believe they they um so they, I'm gonna they, ask... they had the story but they never filmed it because they said it wouldn't they couldn't find a way to fit it in right but in the backstory somewhere where her in the I, I, she said i think joe said he, she's from detroit mm-hmm. somewhere in detroit the son is down there you know oh he's still there he's still there well most likely he's died off now because we do know yeah, that these guys over time they, they, they die do off, die off yeah. right so so it That's... was hard for her to obviously kill her husband but she couldn't kill her son so that was would have been her backstory that would have been a great you know soft yeah. opening for one of these episodes yeah i mean probably this one even though i love the opening scene that you got to see in, Indo- yeah. in Indo- indonesia with all that stuff happening but it would have been nice to yeah that's to get what they that. said they couldn't fit it they didn't they couldn't find a place to put it because i guess they were going with that the the everything going on in that indonesia because then you got the first episode you got joel what happened yeah. with him and sarah yeah yeah and this happens with her husband and her son that would have been cool but, but at least we, at least we, is I mean, I'm, it's, I'm assuming it's canon, right? Like it's part of her, it's yeah, part of her backstory. That's even her backstory. Okay. Yeah, they, they just couldn't. They said they didn't film it because they couldn't find a place to put it. You know, because they're not doing flashbacks too often in actually at all, right? The, the only thing was when when Joel had that PTSD moment where the light was in his face. They they show you a quick scene of 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 him and the soldier, but they they're not doing it during the episodes. No, like that, but so. but the episodes have been you know the first two episodes have started with, fl- with exactly flash or stuff that's happened in the past. Exactly. You know, so that would have been really cool cool yeah. to see. Let, let's let's move on. Let's talk about the clickers now, right? Are we there yet? Let's talk about the clickers. Uh... Because I wanted to play the scene where they're walking out from. What, what were they hold, held up? Just a random building, right? They didn't really make it in the beginning. They didn't really identify where they were. It's just no, they building, just found right? some random building and stuff, which is interesting because in the video game, which we're, we'll talk a little bit about differences. You want to hit that up right now? Just this one difference in the video game. After they leave the core, the the QZ, it's pouring rain. Yeah. 
they never stop in the game to like rest, yeah. spend the night so they can have a conversation. What's up with Ellie or anything? Yeah, they continue on forward. So they go directly out of the rain into you know, it's an office space building. I don't think yeah. it's a hotel like this other place is. Yeah, but they go directly into this place, and so I just thought that was a little interesting how. You know, they decided to go this route with like showing you the beautiful scenery. Check out like yeah. the the overgrown stuff that's daytime yeah, yeah, yeah. now. The bombs, kind of, they, yeah. the the craters from the bombing. Yeah. They show you all that. And actually, the scene we're playing is them walking on that highway. Right. And you know, Ellie's kind of saying rumors of what she's heard, and she drops the first. Uh, you want to call it foreshadowing about clickers, where she mentions, you know, uh, there's that their heads are split open and they yeah. can't see, but they can he they see in the dark or yeah. something like that. Let's listen to that. Let's listen to that. Yeah, yeah. Everyone said the open city was crazy, like swarms of infected running around everywhere. Not exactly like that. You know, people like to tell stories. So there aren't super infected that explode fungus spores on you? Shit, I hope not. Or ones with split open heads that see in the dark like bats. There you go. That's yeah. the first dropping of you know when we when I watched it on Monday uh, on Sunday I, I I missed that part and I picked it up you know on the rewatch, um, but it was interesting that they, they they it's not interesting but it was nice that they led with the clickers as the first kind of major um, obstacle from the fungus that you they encountered from the zombies, right? Because you know. It, it, you know, in the first episode, we saw, you know, the neighbor granny, you know, <laughs> turned out the first, you know, zombie kind of we saw. But it yeah. was it's nice to see this. And, and this kind of the clickers are so popular in the games and they did such a I don't want I don't want to beat a dead horse, but they did such a good job of how aesthetically they looked. You know, I, I mentioned on the last podcast, they're like. I thought they were beautiful from head up, you know, that fungus <laughs> is <laughs> sure the different colors the and stuff color, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's actually pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And then everything below it is horrible. But I know you have a lot of grievances with the whole scenario with the clickers. So this maybe it's a good point time for you to air your grievances, my friend. Well, I mean, I touched on it a little bit yeah. um on when we uh our first initial reaction of the yeah. episode. I found it interesting when I got home when my wife actually finally listened to that episode and yeah. she had the same exact gripes as I did. And most people that I've talked to that have played the game, she's never played the game. She yeah. she's seen every episode of Walking Dead. She's watched some post apocalyptic post apocalyptic stuff with me. Um, so she has enough of an idea of I guess what to do in that scenario, yeah. like what seems like the most appropriate thing to do. But she was even calling out stuff where, you know, they're they're blind. They're, yeah. you know, they can't, they can't see anything. So why are we hiding behind stuff? It's, <laughs> yeah. You had an opportunity. You could have just, you know, aimed right at them and fired right when right you saw the them. Always go and, for the head. Yeah. And I think one of my biggest issues with it is because this is from a video game. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've been in those shoes in the yeah. video game as yeah, Joel, yeah. because when in, in the game, he talks about, you know, what type of, creatures they are what they yeah. can and they can't do and stuff and right off the bat you have to control this character and make the smart move and not get hit not get you know bit or whatever yeah and you just don't see that from him in the show in the show right off the bat he's kind of hiding he kind of puts some he kind of puts himself in that spot to begin with before he kind of sees him but he doesn't really do anything smart after <laughs> that and i understand look it's one of those things where we watch stuff a bunch of times. It's kind of like, well, if I was in that situation, I yeah. would do this. You know, don't go upstairs. Like, what are you doing? Grab the yeah. knife. Don't answer the door. The, those those kind of things. Like, we don't we don't really we're, we're hopefully we're never in a situation like this, so we don't, <laughs> we're not going to be tested on what would be you know what we would do right and what we would do wrong. But it just didn't seem like that would be the right move for this character, considering all the stuff that he's seen in the last twenty years. He's obviously not fresh out of the QZ. He's been, he's in and out. They're he's, smuggling all the time. He's smuggling all the time. He's he's already mentioned to her that he's killed a bunch of you know of the fungus zombies, zombie people. Yeah. We got to come up with a great name for them because I'm not mm. I'm not liking the fungus zombies. No. Um. So and we're also the assuming, infected. Yeah, the infected. He's also obviously encountered. I'm assuming clickers because he yeah. knows that they can't see. He knows that they can't hear. So, but he still shows a lot of fear. And I them. and I understand. I, I understand yeah. he showed a lot of fear, but it's not your first day out in the war zone. Yeah. So I feel like a simple, what he does at the end of that entire fight scene is what he should have done in the beginning of that entire yeah. fight scene, which yeah. is, it's just frustrating for me. 
I've got it off my chest now. We can well to play devil's advocate. <laughs> you know, I, I I think you know, again, it's it's the they they wanted to show the level of fear that these things are extremely dangerous. I get it. I get it. And the the horrible shooting. You know, they don't have a firing range they can go to. They're not Fedra, who you know, who probably lets guys. You know, I, I'm sure you know who practice their aim. So they're okay. I get. But, I get but, that. They should have been able to handle it better. Everybody knows you go for the head or or you burn. Everything burns, right? But the, so I'll I'll credit them to fear on that and to lack of practice actually shooting. You know, um, sure. But it was still it was still awesome though to, to, to no, see I mean, all that. It was a, a the overall like setting for the scene. The, or, like all that stuff was was great. I love seeing the clickers. You're right. Yeah. They did a great job showing us what the clickers look like. The sound. Like, you know, the noises that they, the sound that they made, all that stuff was great. It was wonderful. Um, it's just, that's my, that's my only gripe. And I'm hoping moving forward now yeah. that they've introduced these, these creatures, these characters, yeah. that the next time that Joel and Ellie encounter them, yeah. it's not making those dumb decisions. It's not, it's not trying to make a stupid scare factor for us just so we, the audience can understand what's actually happening. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I know. The last episode we did on Sunday, we weren't sure if she was bitten or scratched. But right. when you watch the episode, you clearly see she was bitten. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to clean that that part up. But let me ask you this: you know, they showed us two elements here: the clickers and the the the, the horde. Are you, who do you think is going to play a more prominent role on the show? The clickers or the the horde factor because that that was pretty that was pretty cool that and and it was like it's not like the Walking Dead horde that are slow right. paced and they're like you know you can just you know they were run, they were beeline they were hauling what I think's gonna happen um, they're gonna the clickers are gonna represent them trying to get to a destination yeah I think is you know th there'll be obstacles kind of throughout buildings and stuff yeah when the horde comes into factor that's when they just need to run away. <laughs> yeah. So I think you, when you see clickers, they're trying to get something or they're yeah. trying to just get to a destination. The horde is going to make them change direction and go a different, <laughs> dude, you know. Dude, yeah. yeah I think there's, that, no, there's no way you, you, you combat that thing. No. That, that I, whole, you could I think you could bomb. take on a clicker, but you can't take on a horde no, like that. There's no, no way. They it's, move it's too bomb. fast. Yeah. It's bomb. 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 <laughs> Um, um, the the next scene, because it's going to lead into our, our, our rifle time to talk about tests a little bit more. Sure. Um, after they get out of that museum, and the taping of the leg is another little Easter egg. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I discovered that they actually, it's a, it's a, an O to the med pack, you know, in the game. Right. And they actually pulled the sound of the tape. Really? And put it into the episode. I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Play, play, play the scene. Let's listen to that. <laughs> There's probably more ahead. So we'll deal with it then. I got it. I got it. What about the kid? Maybe the first bite didn't take. But what about the second? How about you just take the good news? Can you do that? I to think for once maybe we can actually win. Just go and go and watch her. All right, we'll be right back. Guys, want an amazing night out where you get to enjoy award-winning wine with a comfortable and relaxing atmosphere? Well, if you're in the LA County area, Pacella Winery's tasting room is just an Uber ride away. The tasting room is very comfortable, laid back, and relaxing with ample seating and a heated back patio that offers a relaxing and private atmosphere. With over 35 years of collective winemaking experience, Steve Lemley and Nate Hasper joined forces in 2009 to create Pacella Winery's first vintage. The two share an uncompromised and very passionate approach to winemaking that continues to push the limits of their craft with every vintage. Highly rated and award-winning, Pacella Wineries even were named Wine Enthusiast Magazine's highest rated Zinfandel in the entire California Central Coast. With hotels and restaurants nearby, Pacella Winery's tasting room is the ideal date night experience. Make sure to mention this podcast when you visit and get a free tasting. Can't make it to the tasting room? 
Check them out online at PacelloWinery.com and feel free to email them for future wine deliveries in your area. That's Pacello Winery, P-U-L-C-H-E-L-L-A-W-I-N-E-R-Y.com. And remember, Pacello Winery simply doesn't just follow other winemaking trends, meaning there are no limitations to the envelope they push. That's PacelloWinery.com, P-U-L-C-H-E-L-L-A. W I N E R Y dot com. Back to the show. Once again, Joel's ready to run. <laughs> it's the fear again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of uh, tests, just like right before, like in that scene, you see her looking at him. I, I mentioned this on Sunday with a with you know endearing look like he's taking care of me. And and obviously at this point she's already bitten, so she's kind of now like like, you know, thinking about the good in in, in him. Yeah. But then his fear of Ellie again p- creeps up. She's gonna she's bitten again. Why if it doesn't take? Like yeah. like there's a lot of fear in him I think for he... being such a gr- you know, hardened, you know, dude in this world, right? Right. And and because obviously he's gone through a lot in the twenty years. Everybody who sur- survives has. But to me it's just again the fear in him and she's like kind of fed up because she knows her again she knows she's dying yeah and she's, she's, she has she's, the she's hope. Got hours maybe she, yeah hours maybe and she has the hope and it was just she just finished like appreciating him for taking care of her ankle and then he just like most men do we put our foot in our mouths just like let the moment just she, she just wanted to chill for that little moment right sure and and maybe maybe I want to. Do you think she he would have she would have told him that she was bitten if he didn't do, say all that, or was she gonna wait until sh- the very end when they got Ellie to to the state house? I think she would have told him. I think once she saw her hand kind of twitching, that would have been the moment that she would have said something. Mm. Or maybe she goes running off, going ho somewhere. Like, oh, there's clickers there. Like, no, <gasps> like when they're on the roof. Do you think she would have said she would have told him in that scene right there that one we just oh. played? Maybe. You know, like, she finished looking at him. Do you think maybe she's like, Joel, you know, I got bit, you know? Do you think that... And when he says what he says, she just now is like, you know what? I'm not going to say nothing. I'm, now she's mad. Right. And she's just like, just go. You know, and, and then she could probably is looking at her wound off camera. Maybe. I feel like she's more motivated to get the battery. <laughs> no, I, think so, it's, I don't think it's battery at this point anymore. Well, no. At this point, it's 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 Ellie. She is, I think she's completely convinced that she is the key. For, from this point on, She she's using well, the now, battery now to if, activate Joel to get, right. to, you know, well, to do I what think she wants. Maybe in the beginning of this episode, yes. it was a little bit Ellie, mostly battery. But as soon as she yeah. gets bit, I think it probably in her mind, it clicks more Ellie than battery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's seen obviously the most motivated to get from point A to point B since the beginning of the journey. Yes. Um, so I don't know if she says anything to Joel because that would stop them from, from keep going. Yeah, maybe I think, a delay, yeah. I think her whole, per- point. her whole motivation would have been to not say anything until they get her to the spot. Yeah. I think maybe what she's thinking is once we, once we meet up with the fireflies, we hand Ellie over, you got your battery. Yeah. Now you can go get your brother, and then that's when you tell him, hey, I've been bit. This is the end of the line for me. And then he can make that look at you like, you know, that look of disgust, which kind of bothered me, like, a little bit. We could, I want to talk about that for a second. Yeah. Um, not right now. But no, just go, ahead. The, go ahead. Well, it's, once he discovers, it, it just bothered me. It's one thing when, I mean, obviously, we don't know what, they, what his backstory has been the last 20 years yeah. and what he's seen. Like, he could have had his best friend. Maybe he had another girlfriend. Who was yeah. infected, then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, they kind of jump at him. So maybe that's why he's like really hesitant to go yeah. near anyone that's affected. Fear. The fear. Yeah. And I understand his fear towards Ellie and his, his, I guess, I don't understand it, but maybe his, him allowing himself to feel that way towards her because he doesn't really know this person. And then also, maybe there's similarities that he's already seeing. I mean, he is kind of seeing that with from his daughter to her. He, he looks at his watch a couple of times, yeah, kind yeah. of thinking that he's, you know, that he's thinking of her. But when I would just think when when he saw that Tess was bitten, yeah, there would be more of a comfort kind of motion towards her than the look of disgust and fear. And yeah. that's, that's just what I was just hoping for. 
Um, and I, obviously, yeah. I'm not, once again, not in that situation. Yeah. Hopefully never am in that situation. What, you got COVID? <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe after 20 years, he's just so programmed to, sure. you're infected, my hands are clean, I can't, you're, you're, you over there, I'm over here, where's the gun? put you out kind of thing because he's obviously seen some travesties right some horrible situations sure with people infected but you would think somebody you're romantically involved with there would be some more emotion there like oh no but like but i mean he maybe a tear pedro does a great he does a great look like you know after he, he sees it you know but the, the fear again creeps in when he backs up right so yeah it, it's a very interesting and then she gives you know a great monologue yeah. on you know well, all the horrible things that she's they've done and this could reset everything. Right. We'll, we'll listen. Well, I think we're going to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before we do that, to go all the way back to your original question, yeah, yeah, I don't think she says anything. <laughs> I think she waits till Ellie's passed off, yeah, or passed she, off, and there. then she says something. Yeah, because when 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 Joel's inspecting the 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 truck and there's nobody there, she's like, "Let's go, let's go, let's go," and she's like running into there. You know what to, I was thinking? Yeah, you get a fucking truck. There's a battery in that thing. Yeah. There's a truck right there. She's not, I'm telling you, at this point, she needs Ellie to be, you know, saved. Let's listen to the, to the, um, to, to her little monologue. Sure. This is real. Oh, she's fucking real. I need you to get her to Bill and Frank's. No. They'll take her off your hands. No. They'll handle it from here. No, 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 I can't. They yeah. won't take her. They're they not going to take they her. will, because you'll convince them. Yes, you will. I, I never ask you for anything, not to feel the way I felt, no. not to, no, you shut the fuck up, because I don't have time. This is your chance. You get her there. You keep her alive. And you set everything right. All the shit we did. Please say yes, Joel. Please. <sighs> oh, fuck! <clears throat> Can I just say one thing here? What's up? I feel like she asks a lot of him. She does. She she does. Um, but there's a lot in that in there. She does ask a lot, but the the one thing I pulled out from there is where she says, you know, she, she never asked him to feel the way she felt. So I'm assuming that's a re in reference to their relationship. She obviously probably I don't want to use the word love, but it's into him more than he is into her. And it's justifiable. He lost his daughter, so he can't I, have the same positive emotions, maybe. See, I feel like if I feel like it was mutual, their feelings towards each other. Mm -hmm. I, when she said that, I for some reason I was thinking that she was talking about maybe her worldviews <laughs> on like the state of the world, like there's no hope or there is hope or yeah. believe in the fireflies, believe in a cure, like that kind of stuff. I never I don't know why I was. I never thought of the relationship when she was saying that. I'd... Yeah. Well, uh, they don't. In the first episode, you know, they just show her come in, you know, lay next to him, hug him up a little bit, and then right. next thing she's making breakfast, kind of thing, right? So, so they never really, you know, um, nurture that, see that side of the things, the relationship. It, it's more the business side of things, sure. but obviously they're they're an item, right? They're living together. Um, but the way I I took that is. You know, not to sound certain way, but when when a, when a lady says that to you, you know, that's usually more of the heart kind of situ thing with it's like a relationship thing. Like, okay. you know, you're not put. I never asked you to put more into this relationship, you know, than that uh, what I give. That's that's how I I put what? that. <laughs> okay. And, and then you know <laughs> the whole thing about the 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 put set right what we've. They've obviously done some horrible things, yeah. You know, in in the name of smuggling and surviving, and again, it's it's more probably hope. killed a couple clickers. Kind of yeah. knew what to do in that situation. <laughs> You're not gonna let that go. Huh? Nope. <laughs> she she is she is hope and he is fear it, throughout this episode. Um, that's that's the the, the dynamic. I can see I, that. I, I, I see. can definitely see that throughout this episode, yeah. which is, I guess, it's done well if you look at it that way. I just maybe would have wished. That they didn't use Joel as the fear, even though he is that kind of play. That I mean, that's kind of his place, yeah. Even in the game, yeah. but I just think I just think it's more justifiable in the game because you're just all you're trying to do is just get guns. Yeah, that's really the whole thing. You want to be a little controversial right now? Do I? Be a little polarizing. Okay. Ellie, you know, she, throughout that she's just you know she has some weird 
you know, look in her face. She obviously is the one that figures out that she got bitten, and she she's making some funny faces in in in, in that scene at the end. Um, thus far, two episodes in, you know, she, she, any growth there? Because I know if she hasn't grown on you after the first episode. Any growth here? She has her. Mo- I mean, she has her moments. So one thing that I started doing because after my correction that I, you know, after someone pointed something out that I noticed in the, that I thought was in the game as far as the, the play mechanic. Misremembering. Mis, misremembering. I've been playing along with the game. So yeah. I've now played all the way through the game up to, up to the point where, um, Tess, you know, Tess dies. So I know the differences between, you know, what happens there. Um, good Blondie sheep at Blondie sheep will be very happy to hear that. Well, I, I, it's it's all because of her. <laughs> Good job, Aaron. <laughs> um, but what, but replaying that game and then seeing the voice acting for yeah. for Ellie, it's just there's just a different tone there, mm. and it's I don't know if it's necess- I don't know if it's the the direction that they want Ellie to be this time around because mm-hmm. even Joel has a different kind of tone in the show than in the game. Mm-hmm. For good or for bad, I don't really know the answer to that because I'm so it's one of those things where you hear. You see something, you hear something for so long, and then there's some change to it. It takes you a little bit to wrap your brain around it. Yeah, um, it happens to me all the time when I have to like when we would you know do a scratch song or something like that, and then all of a sudden we decide to finalize it and we're changing parts into it. And it's kind of like well, we've had it the same way for so long. It's just it's imprinted in your brain. So I don't. It's it's hard for me to kind of like new Ellie when old Ellie was so good. Yeah. So that's kind of my thing right now. There's there's parts. Rewatching it, I've actually watched it three times now. So I watched, oh, this episode. Yeah, I watched it once with you. I watched it uh, once with my wife, and then I watched it again today for just to kind of like yeah. you know for certain things, just make sure that I'm remembering things right in yeah. the in the show. There's some scenes that I kind of picked out like a little bit that didn't bother me as much, mm-hmm. um, but then also that I kind of you know maybe it's because I am getting used to this version. Yeah. of Ellie, and I know it's hard for me to like to say. It's just there's. There's that cockiness in the in in the video game mm-hmm. with that Ellie, but then that cockiness doesn't come ar- come off as I don't know how to say it without insulting the actress know. Bella Ramsey. No, just in general, every <laughs> it's just it doesn't come off as I want to say crass, but that's not really the word I'm looking for. It doesn't come off as it just doesn't come off as mean. Okay. I guess that's the best way I could say it without kind of like going mm-hmm. a little crazy. Yeah. And it, but there's also like this, there's somewhat naive sweetness, um, to the, to the, to the video game, uh, voiceover. And then even the way they actually do it, the, the, the design of her and stuff like that, her facial expressions and how she kind of handles certain situations where it's some parts, the ways that, that um, Ramsey talks in this, it's just like almost a little too opposite where I'm just trying to figure out exactly who this character is. Does she like violence? Does she like yeah. to see this pain? Does she like to see someone get their faces beaten in? Yes, Does she like yes, to see all these yes. I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't get that from the first from Ellie in the game. Yeah, and so that's why I'm kind of trying to figure out well, where are they going to go with this character? Is the end result still the same with this character? Like the character buildup as it is in the game, and that's. That's my pain I have to deal with. <laughs> well, you're replaying. I'm not replaying. Sure. I mean, I played it years ago because mm-hmm. I wanted to have a different perspective and while I, I'm watching. And so I it's good pl- that you playing it while you, while the episodes are going. Right. Because you'll be able to pull, pull stuff. And I'm, I want to quote it at it from, look at it from a point of view of having been playing the game a, a long time. And yeah. some of the stuff is nice and fresh. Yeah. Um, but, but also, I mean, there's been, I can think of another show that I, that I love, but I I hated one of the actors for most of the first season. Uh, Breaking Bad, like I hated Jesse in that in oh, that okay. show. I couldn't stand him in the first season because <laughs> it's kind of like, dude, why are you still hanging out with this guy? He's the reason why nothing's working out. Just get rid of him, and you'd be totally fine. But come like the second or third season, yeah, he, he was evolves. like the best part of the yeah. whole show. So maybe they're looking for more of an arc for her. Yeah, um, because I mean, I mean, I liked Ellie from the get go in the game. Yeah, I I'm not saying I hate. This Ellie, it's just it's not grown on me yet, and yeah. you know she's a little annoying because not the actress but the character because she's a fourteen year old locked up in a QC zone. Sure, okay, kind that's, of, you know this, that's this one's part more of that annoying. Yeah. This one's there you go. This one's more that's annoying than the other one. Yeah, because you know and and it's deliberate, and I think it is. Is it deliberate to make, though? Is it deliberate? 
I, maybe for the character arc that you just mentioned, it's going to be interesting to see yeah. how, how how that dynamic breaks out. Obviously, but, I mean, this isn't this is one thing I wouldn't mind revisiting every yeah recap as we go. episode, yeah, like one it. like one of these things, just to see how we both feel about her and Joel. Yeah, because there's still things with Joel that I'm still trying to wrap my head around as well. Because yeah. th- there there's things that the like, facial expressions and stuff, or like the ways that he delivers lines in this show, I yeah. feel is also. A little bit more different, yeah. Of than course. the game. I think he's it, doing a great job, though. No, I th- I think he's doing a phenomenal job. But it it's maybe it's just easier for me to accept the direction that that one's going because, I mean, I've just been hearing his lovely voice in a metal head suit for so long. Yeah. In Mandalorian, so I'm <laughs> I'm just kind of used to the way he delivers things. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, let's do some quick I'm little sure Easter if that eggs. Made any sense? <laughs> so let's just move on. <laughs> yeah, some quick little Easter eggs, um, and and fun little facts that we we found out this episode was actually directed by Neil Druckmann himself, his first live action director debut. And for somebody who's never done it before, I thought that was was phenomenal. Yeah, congratulations, Neil. Great, good good job. Right? You know, um, give you credit on this one. You had mentioned that you would have loved to see like the infection break out in the rest of the world. So Mm -hmm. we find out um, this week that they actually had planned that as well. They were gonna do like a montage of of the infection breaking out across Just the world. Just imagine what the music would be like. I don't know about yeah. <laughs> but it would they 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 had planned that and you know they just didn't have the budget for it you know to do it th- properly because they, they I blame Discovery sh- on that one <laughs> way to go Discovery <laughs> the show was meant to be you know you know obviously it's it's in America and they're gonna cross o- across America but they wanted to show that it's not only an American problem so we only got the Indonesian part right um the um the do lighter think do you think they'll show another country um. I bet Maybe. you they show one more. I yeah, think they, they probably will. Maybe you know, there's still room. I'm, s- I'm well, especially still... soft openings. They have it's endless. They could do. You've so. been doing more research as far as the development of the show yeah. than I have. I'm still rooting for uh, another country. Let me tell you what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for another country. I still want to see a flashback of Tommy, Joel, and uh, Tess. Yeah, I want to see that dynamic. Like, because obviously yeah, yeah. she cares. She she cares to get to get to Tommy as well. Yeah. So I want to see what was built up from there. Um, obviously I want to see how, um, which I think we're, that's going to happen anyways, but I want to see how Ellie gets bit. Yeah. Um, actually I wouldn't even mind or seeing maybe even a farther flashback of when she gets put, you know, the relationship between, um, what's her name? Don't worry. You're going to get all of that and that's, I'm not wow. to ruin it okay. to anybody. So, um, I'll just stop talking now. <laughs> You're gonna it's get, your show now. You're gonna get. Sit down. You're gonna get some good stuff there. <laughs> but um, here's my drink. <laughs> Tess's lighter, um, that you know she's, you know, that's not working. The little Zippo. That's actually, um, it was modeled after Sam Dr- Drake's, um, from Uncharted Four. Um, I, I know I haven't played that game. You did. You love that whole series. So I love anything Naughty Dog does. That was that was his lighter and yep. Troy Baker. Mm-hmm. The actor plays Sam, and he's also the voice of Joel in the games. He yes, will he be is. in the show in the HBO vehicle, but as a different character. So that's a nice little tidbit there. The closing song that starts when Tess is violated with um, the, oh, that man. kiss. Hold How on. good was that kiss, though? That's crazy. That was it's eerily not, disgusting. That's, that's not good. That, that's... Good for the viewing of you know what it is. It's, I, like, I, it's just never thought you see that though. It's just too disgusting. And why did that clicker stop, but none of the other clickers did? She's sitting there slapping Because they realize she's, she's one of them. That, see, that's what I thought, too. But then yeah. why is the other one, like, do spores make out? that I, Or not spores, but fungus? If she's already taken over... They're all about procreating. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. But that's the one that was, you know, attracted to that one the most. So it stopped. Like, hey. Hey, I thought it was... I some, see you I thought there. it was... It was great and shocking. I think when shows I didn't do like stuff it. like that... I didn't that, like it at all. I didn't oh, like I, it at I, all. You didn't I, like I, it, I thought huh? there was no reason for that. It we've was we've already see, We already saw the exchange of fungus from mouth to mouth. I didn't need to see it willingly done. You know what I mean? She allowed that to happen. Yeah, because part of her, the fungus was taken over, and the last bit of her is her flipping. That's the last so bit so, of Tess is flipping the the thing one last time to finally getting it lit. So my the third time, over. my third time, and some people might have thought this the first time that maybe she allowed it, and that's taking one for the team. 
maybe she allowed that so she wouldn't have been ripped apart so she could actually stay there and continue, and continue nah, to hopefully the fungus, zip. The fungus kept kept her going. That's the fungus was taking over, but and you know the last bit of her is yeah. I, I actually I because like if, that because if too. she does run, she can't light the place. Yeah, on she fire. can't light the place on but fire. But she also, when they were coming, could have just hid behind something <laughs> and still did it in hopes that they weren't going to see her. I mean, there's a lot of easier ways. I mean, they wanted to use that lighter because there's grenades on the floor. She could have just pulled the pin, hold it, and then as soon as they come, let it go. Ooh, didn't even think of that. That's totally the easiest done. way, right? Totally but, but she could have done the, 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 done the, uh, the, the TV shoot the, ga- shoot the gas no. with the gun, you know, sparks. And I know it's not, with I don't her, think it's a real with thing. With her aim, she would have hit the window. That's right. <laughs> Stormtrooper. <laughs> but that song is called Allowed to Be Happy. It, it was exclusively made for The Last of Us Part 2, the game. And th- that's the, the music that plays out mm-hmm. uh, of the, yeah. that episode. So that's pretty cool. And then, you know, a little difference in the game. It's Fedra that just shoots her. It's not, you know. Well, it's not the, the or she. It's still it leads up to kind of the same result yeah. where she knows that she knows that she's bit, but they know that Fe, it's Fedra that pulls up in their yeah. cars as opposed to all oh, the herds coming. So yeah. she tells them to run away, and she decides to stand there, kind of like you know, Billy the Kid, last man stand, yeah, standing, standing yeah. or whatever it is, and she tries to fight on, you know. Fedra, you don't see it happen on screen. You just hear hear it happen yeah. as you're running away, and then you there's a part where you actually get to cl- you what you climb across the top, and you actually see her dead body. And all you're doing now is just running away from them. So yeah. firefight, and it's not the whole building explodes. She doesn't sacrifice herself to blow up a building. She sacrifices herself to yeah. kind of shoot a couple dudes. But but we know from the first episode with the from the it's instead of a, a truck hitting them, it's a plane crashing. A little more right. dramatic. Yeah. You know, it's good for TV. I, <laughs> I enjoy those differences. Yeah, I know. So I. I know. I have griped about certain things, but yeah. I do enjoy the the differences just because, as a person who's played the game, yeah, I don't necessarily know where it's going all the time. That's good. I'm pretty sure the end result is still going to be the same, but how they get there, the little subtle, the little differences. Yeah, um, I like it. I like the whole. You know, I like we're, we're trying to leave to get the brother instead of trying to just get guns. If there's yeah. more. There's more to that than that. And there, I like. I like the fact that she, even though I didn't. I don't think it's necessary to show the makeout scene with the fungus. I do like the fact that she, that's the reason why she actually sacrifices herself and she blows herself up. Yeah. Not to just like, it's, I, I like those differences and I, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing more of those differences. Totally agree. And you know, she, she ends, you know, th- this episode with, in her, her speech on get, get her to Bill and Frank. And next week's episode is actually, is, is titled long, long time. And they're going to, finally give us they've mentioned bill and frank from the very first episode and she mentions them again so it's going to be a good backstory on bill and frank um it's it's going to be really really cool because i love that the show is filling in all those blanks yeah that the game didn't have so um can't wait for that i wish i you know wish we could watch it right now but we'll wait for sunday gotta get off that netflix thing <laughs> any final thoughts before we we check out um no, final thoughts are even the, after the third time I've seen it yeah. and my gripes, I still I'm still enjoying this show immensely. Yeah. I look forward to the next episodes and you know but I, I'm enjoying the ride. Let's, so let's am keep it going. I. I love these those soft openings. I mean, I thought the the bomb bomb everybody in it is just mm-hmm. I know we're gonna probably have bomb. a lot more um um talks on on what you would do as this episode, as the show goes on, but how do you not these great. these kind yeah, of shows? There's a lot of the, yeah. dilemmas in there that you, you you do, and and they show you a lot of bomb. They obviously bombed the hell out of of Boston, and it said they she actually said it worked to slow down, but she not also mentioned city. it didn't work in every city. So right. there's gonna be go. There's some places where it's obviously really bad. Yeah. So I uh, hope you like this episode. Let's we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah. Thank you everybody for listening. Uh, you know we really appreciate it, and you know thanks again to our Patreon producer Night Rider uh, one sixty nine. Um, you've got the whole month. Thank you so much. And everybody that's, you know, supported us on, you know, Twitter, Twitter yeah. on any kind of social media Patreon. stuff, Patreon and everything. Thank you Great. so much. And once again, if you guys hear anything that we missed or, you know, maybe we made a mistake or something, you know, send us a message, let us know. The only way this podcast grows is with your interaction, your, you know, your involvement. So thanks We're again. Building the community, like you said. Yeah. I like to say. Yeah. So we'll, awesome. uh, we'll, uh, we'll, hopefully you'll be hearing us on Sunday. All right. Catch you next time.
Intro music composed by Kyle Torme. Outro music and bed music composed by Jason Zaffrey. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Last of Us, a Rot Your Brain podcast. Subscribe to The Last of Us podcast feed at rotyourbrainmedia.com slash The Last of Us. Follow us on Twitter at rot underscore your brain and support Rot Your Brain Media and its podcast by being a part of this exciting new and growing community. Visit patreon.com slash rotyourbrainmedia.